So I was in the market for a very small RTX 2060 and the Gigabyte Mini popped up and I just had to have it. So I went out and bought this one, but at the same time, Gigabyte asked me to take a look at their Gaming OC Pro. So I thought, why not get both these cards here and test it against the RTX 2060 founders, which I've already done a review on if you wanna check it out up here, where it performed really well. The cooler that Nvidia's implemented here did a great job of overclocking whilst also staying quiet and keeping the temperatures down. But today we're gonna to be taking these two graphics cards, overclocking them, testing out the stock performance, the power consumptions, the acoustics, the thermals, basically the whole tech yes tour. And I'm actually rooting for the little guy here, the little mini. He's almost half the size of this guy here, the Gaming OC Pro. And so we've got the big guy and then we've got the super big guy versus the little guy. So let us know in the comments, guys, who are you rooting for? And if you're not rooting for any of these three Gravis cards, let me know what are you rooting for. And with that aside, let's unbox these things and get you guys some gaming performance figures. So there's the benchmarks tested at 1080p between these three RTX 2060s. And the reason I haven't put any other Gravis cards in this comparison is because I wanted to see how these cards perform specifically compared to the Founders Edition card. If you want to see how the 2060 performs overall against the other Gravis cards like the 2070 and also the 2080 and the AMD variants, then I'll put the link again up here for the 2060 review. But what we saw with Far Cry 5 was that the Gaming OC Pro out of the box it comes ahead by a little bit, but once we started overclocking the Founders Edition and also the Mini, they started pulling ahead of the OC Pro, and it was by quite a little bit. I'd say it's by the roughly the same gap that the OC Pro performs its stock. So you can see moving through these results as we move through Resident Evil 2, when we move through Shadows of the Tomb Raider, Metro Exodus, and also Battlefield 5, it was pretty much a similar trend throughout all these five games. And so what was going on here? Why was the OC Pro not performing as well as the other two once we started overclocking? And I'd have to put it down to the actual power limit. The OC Pro for some odd reason had a limit of 113%. Uh, when we compare that to the Mini, the cheapest variant of all three here, especially in Australia where it comes in $22 Aussie cheaper than the Founders Edition card, that was going up to 125% power limit. So the only thing holding back the Mini really was the cooler itself, which actually did a pretty good job. And we'll show you guys the results here. The Gigabyte solution actually surprised me here. I thought it would crumble, especially when overclocked. And usually when I do these temps, thermals and acoustics, I usually just do them with overclocked levels because they represent a worst case scenario. Here we had a ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. So it is a little bit hot, especially when you compare it to some people who live in sub 20 degree temperatures. But what we got here at 100% fan speeds was 59 decibels. Honestly, this was getting very loud. It still kept it at 64 degrees C. Uh, then we go down to 80%. And it was some reason my sound meter was measuring 55 decibels. And we got 69 degrees here. But this for me personally was one of the sweet spot areas. Uh, even though it was a 55 decibel noise level, it was actually bearable. I don't know what it was. Maybe if someone studied sound acoustics, they can weigh in here as to why this thing was actually quite loud, but it wasn't annoying at all. Uh, moving down to 60% saw the noise levels drop tremendously, where we got 39 decibels, but 78 degrees. So we are starting to approach that hotter area. And then the auto fan speeds went to 73%, and they got about 45 decibels. So basically with the Mini itself, if you get this card, whether you're overclocking it or using it out of the box, just leave the fan speeds on auto, as they do quite a good job 
of balancing noise and uh, thermals. In terms of the weight and size of this thing, it comes in at 170 millimeters long. It also has a little bit of extra width on the PCB, making it 10 mil thicker at 121 mils versus 111 on the OC Pro and also the Founders Edition. It weighs in at roughly 505 grams compared to the Founders Edition's 965 grams and then the OC Pro coming in just over 800 grams. And the OC Pro also comes in at 280 mil long, so it is longer than the Founders Edition's 230 mil and uh, it has three fans versus two fans versus one fan. So we kind of got a three, two, one thing going on here. But speaking of the temperatures and noise of the OC Pro, this of course fared the best of the group here, coming with auto settings of 56%, which kept the noise levels at a pretty impressive 34 decibels at 69 degrees. And then moving on to 60%, we had 39 decibels and 66 degrees. 80% saw 45 decibels, 60 degrees, then 100% saw 55 decibels and 56 degrees. Now you're probably thinking it's a little bit unfair since the Mini and also the Founders overclocked higher than the OC Pro, but here's where things get a little bit weird as well. The OC Pro was using up the most power out of all three Gravis cards when I was testing power consumption, uh, both out of the box and also overclocked. So it was the most inefficient in terms of power consumption between these three cards I tested here today. The Mini was getting the best performance out of the box, and then when it was overclocked, it did pretty good too. Then the Founders Edition, that's a solid implementation of an RTX 2060 through and through. But basically to cap everything off with this comparison and review of these two cards here, I'll quickly show you the overclock numbers in the form of a graph where the memory speeds were all pretty similar across all three different samples. Uh, however, again, I'll reiterate that the Founders Edition, also the Mini, did perform better in actual GPU core clocks than the OC Pro. And I believe that, again, has to do with that power limit of 113% versus 118 versus 125 on the Gigabyte Mini. One thing I'd love to see with this little card right here is to put a water block on it and see how high you could get this thing because I was just actually coming out of this review very impressed with this card. But physically speaking, you don't get a backplate, you get three DisplayPort 1.4 outs as well as a HDMI 2.0 out that expands again to the OC Pro having the same input and output on the Gravis card itself also featuring an 8-pin versus an 8-pin versus an 8-pin on the Founders Edition. However, with the Founders Edition, you do lose one display port out and you do gain a USB Type-C as well as a DVI out. The OC Pro, just like the Founders Edition, however, does feature a backplate and does have some RGB lighting on the side, which you can control via software. Anyway guys, to cap things all off with this review of these three cards is the price. In the US, you can get the Founders Edition for 350 and you can also get the Mini for 350. Uh, the OC Pro, that was 390 US, so it is coming in $40 more expensive on Amazon. And in Australia, this is 619 Aussie dollars versus 578 versus 599. So the Mini is the cheapest in Australia. And in my opinion, it is gonna serve people who wanna build a Mini ITX rig very well. Now keep in mind the thermals you did see here today are going to be affected if you are using a mini ITX case with not so good airflow. So the airflow is up to you. If you're gonna be putting one of these in a case, which I'll be doing very soon here on the channel, so stay tuned, make sure you have good airflow. Otherwise, this thing will get very hot and will possibly throttle in a mini ITX solution. The Founders Edition card, as I said in the original review, great build quality, great overclocks. I was impressed with the design, it looks very sleek. So basically the OC Pro, I could only really recommend this for someone who either really loves the look and design of this card versus the other two cards here or any other RTX 2060, and uh, they don't want to uh, download MSI Afterburner or an overclocking program and just change a few sliders. It does perform a little bit better out of the box, but I don't feel that extra price increase warrants the extra performance, especially when the Founders Edition card and also the Mini overclock to higher levels and give you better performance and value for money. So sometimes it's not always about the dog in the fight, it's the fight and the dog. Or if you're in Australia, I can give you guys a different example. Sometimes it's not always the Commodore that the Bogan owns, but more so the Bogan in the Commodore. But ultimately the Gigabyte RTX 2060 Mini did so well in today's battle. I came into this thinking this thing would sort of fail, especially once we started overclocking it and the thermal performance, but it impressed me to the point where I can recommend this thing for Mini ITX users. 
even if you want to get this thing and chuck a custom water block on it, I don't know if there is one for this, but I'd love to see one, then this thing is definitely going to give you a good experience. It's a good design, good job Gigabyte, but I would like to see the OC Pro uh, especially have some uh, limits uplifted, especially to that of the Founders Edition card, and we could see some better performance out of that. Uh, but other than that, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's review. If you did, then be sure to hit that like button. Let us know in the comment section below what you think of these RTX cards we've featured here today, and also what you think of the little guy here coming in at 170 mil. My hand is actually bigger than this Gravis card, and I look forward to giving you guys the mini ITX build soon, which is going to be really good. We're using a case from 2011, so if you wanna see that, make sure you stay subbed with those notifications turned on. You're not going to want to miss this one, but also if you want the inside scoop before it even hits YouTube, be sure to check us out at Tech Yes City on Instagram. And with that aside, I will catch you guys in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.